how's it going? All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about the Perseverance rover, seeing as how it landed last Thursday, February 18th, 2021. As you probably know, the Mars Perseverance rover launched from Earth July 30th, 2020, and took about seven months to try to reach Mars. The objective of the Perseverance rover is to land in Jezero Crater, take samples of the soil there, hermetically seal them into these tubes, keep them, await another vehicle to come to Mars to take these samples back to Earth at another time. The goal is to determine whether there was microbial life or there was life on Mars previously or billions of years ago. In addition to this primary goal, Perseverance is supposed to test several technologies and experiments to prove that these technologies work and how they will affect future missions to Mars, whether it be manned or unmanned. So there's actually a Mars helicopter, which will be the first time ever we test powered flight on another planet, especially since the Martian atmosphere is so thin. It is about 100 times thinner than our atmosphere here on Earth. The mission duration for the Perseverance rover is one Martian year, which is 687 Earth days or 1.9 Earth years. So this is great, but how does the Perseverance rover have the electrical power needed to do all these experiments and to power a lot of the technologies on it? It's simple, really. It uses a multi-mission radioisotope thermoelectric generator. Say that three times fast. So what, what does that mean? It's basically a device that uses the heat generated from the natural decay of plutonium-238 to generate the electricity needed so that the rover can do its stuff. Some of you might be wondering, how much does it weigh? Like, is it small? Is it big? So this picture shows you how big the rover is from a dimensional standpoint, as well as that it weighs 1,025 kilograms. Now, what are some of the cool experiments and cool instrumentation that the Perseverance rover has? First of all, one of the coolest things is an experiment called MOXIE, brought to you by MIT. Thank you, MIT. What is the purpose of MOXIE? First of all, what is MOXIE? It is Mars Oxygen in Situ Resource Experiment. What does that mean? It means that the experiment is supposed to produce oxygen from the plethora of carbon dioxide that's in Martian atmosphere. It's about 96% carbon dioxide. So this is really important and super cool because that means if we have this capability in the future, we can produce oxygen to breathe as well as produce oxygen that is an oxidizer for rockets for the future. So for example, we send humans, they can breathe, they can use this oxygen to fill the rockets so they can come back. So we don't have to carry all the fuel that we need for a round trip mission. We can, you, we can actually use resources on Mars to help us reduce the amount of payload that we have to take with us. So this is pretty cool and I cannot wait to see what happens with this experiment. Next up from Spain. Spain has put an instrument called MEDA, M-E-D-A. What does that stand for? Mars Environmental Dynamics Analyzer. So what does it do? It's a set of sensors that can measure temperature, pressure, wind direction, and speed. It can also measure uh, the relative humidity in the atmosphere, as well as detect the dust, the shape, and the size of the dust, so we can understand what these look like on Mars. Next up, that's pretty cool, brought to you by Norway, is RIMFAX, which stands for Radar Imager for Mars Subsurface Experiment. What is the purpose of it? It's a ground penetrating radar that is supposed to give us centimeter resolution of the geologic makeup of the Martian ground. So it's gonna give us a better idea of what it looks like underneath. So it's pretty cool. So now let's talk about the coolest thing ever, which is this Martian helicopter. Flying on the surface of Mars is vastly different than flying on Earth because we have a much thicker atmosphere but there it's pretty thin. So therefore the, the aerodynamic behavior is quite different. So this will be the first ever demonstration of powered flight on another planet and in an atmosphere such as that on Mars. And the mission and objective of the Mars helicopter named Ingenuity is completely independent of Perseverance's mission. They wanna do a technology demonstration of this helicopter in order to inform on future missions that can use aerial vehicles or 
autonomously operated helicopters. But how is this helicopter powered? Is it using an RTG or is it using solar panels? The Mars Helicopter Ingenuity uses solar panels to charge a battery that then provides power to the helicopter in order for it to fly. And aboard this helicopter, there's two cameras. So they plan to fly, take some photos, and then send it back to Earth to see how this is operating, and then demonstrate that this helicopter actually works and hopefully will give us better clues as to how we can use these helicopters or aerial vehicles for future exploration of Mars. Before we get into the landing, as I mentioned earlier, it was launched July 30th, 2020, and it took seven months for it to reach Mars. And it launched aboard an Atlas V rocket. The landing is one of the most critical phases of Perseverance rover's journey because the heating involved when you enter the atmosphere of a planet is enormous. And the fact that the atmosphere is quite different than Earth poses another challenge because you can't use a lot of the aerodynamics to slow you down. You have to actively slow down the rover. So you're coming in super fast, 19,500 kilometers an hour, which is about 12,100 miles an hour. And then you enter the atmosphere and you have to slow down to three kilometers an hour in order for you to land, which is about two miles per hour. There's a significant amount of deceleration that has to occur. And as it enters, there's a lot of heating going on and these things you have to take care of. And I'm gonna show you a video that does not belong to me. This is 100% NASA's animation and I will go through the whole process of landing. As the rover approaches Martian atmosphere, it despins, and the aeroshell, as you can see, protects it from the insane heating it will experience. You will experience vibration as a result. And then at a certain point in velocity, you're gonna deploy the parachute slow it down significantly. Following that, you're going to drop the heat chip. And then drop the rover and do the powered descent navigate to where Jezero Crater is. And then as you get closer to your intended target, the sky crane will lower the rover in place. That's it. Once it's there, it does its business. To give you an idea how much a mission like this costs, the Perseverance rover, which launched in 2020, cost $2.9 billion in comparison to Curiosity rover, which cost $3.2 billion. And then in comparison to Vikings 1 and 2, which are not rovers, they went into interstellar space, obviously accounting for inflation is about $7.1 billion. So you can understand the money that needs to be spent in order to do these missions. That's it for today's informative session about the Perseverance rover. I hope you guys learned a lot and you appreciate this information. See you next time and don't forget to subscribe.